Well hi everyone and a warm welcome back to the channel. Uh, a bit of a different one this time around. This is a video that I've pulled together based on some of the queries and questions that we get from some of you. Uh, particularly newbies or potential caravan newbies. Um, that question that you keep asking us is, um, what do we need to think about or consider when buying a caravan? Well it's a great question. But we're not experts, like I always say, we can share with you uh, our sort of own experiences and also observations and feedback that we've picked up along the way. There's certainly a lot to consider. The first thing is whether you're thinking about buying a caravan or whether you're in the market to buy a caravan. And they are quite different because if you're thinking about it, it's literally something that you've thought about or discussed with your, your better half or whatever that you may consider buying a caravan. That doesn't mean you're in the market to buy one, it's something that you're just thinking about. The difference is that when you are in the market to buy a caravan, there's two or three things that you've definitely got together. Uh, one is funding, so you've either got the cash or the access to funds to buy a caravan. Um, you'll probably know at that point when you're in the market what caravan you're looking for. And, uh, and number three, you probably already know where you're going to buy it from. So if you're in the market, you've got the cash, uh, you probably know what caravan you're after and you've got a good idea, number three, of where you're going to buy it from. So this is about maybe somewhere in between when you're thinking about it and when you're uh, going to go and make that first visit down to your ca caravan dealer or start looking through the classifieds of the local rag to find out where there's a caravan for sale. So we'll go through some of those key considerations and I think the first and most important one is where are you starting from, what's your base? And, and that's probably a lot to do with the sort of car that you have at the moment because that will dictate very much uh, the kind of caravan that you'll be in the market to buy. So the first thing that you'll need to consider is, is the car that you've got currently suitable for towing a caravan? And if so, uh, up to what size caravan might you be able to tow? So uh, uh, what you'll need to understand is, I suppose, what they call the 85 rule or the 85% rule. Because the way it works is you, you need to consider what's called the MTPLM. The MTPLM, that stands for the Maximum Technically Permissible Laden Mass. And what that basically means is uh, whatever caravan you've got, when you've got it filled up with all your gear, all your crockery, all your utensils, accessories, clothes, one thing and another, it will have a maximum mass. Um, and that will be on the label of the caravan. To give you some indication on that, uh, a small two berth van will probably be somewhere around about a thousand kilograms and up to a luxury uh, maybe four berth or even six berth caravan might be up to more like 2,000 kilograms. So anywhere in between 1,000 and 2,000 depending on the size and how many berths you've got and whether it's twin axle and all that sort of stuff. Uh, would be the MTPLM, the Maximum Technically Permissible Laden Mass, your caravan with everything in it. Now that's not to be confused with what's called MRO. That's a, <laughs> they're the two things you need to get your head around, and it does take a little while to get your head around. Now MRO is basically standing for the Mass in Running Order. Mass in Running Order is MRO, and that is the weight of your caravan as it leaves the factory. Now. You need to be careful on this because a caravan that was probably um, manufactured before 2011 would not include things like gas bottles, uh, the heating system or the, maybe even a battery or something like that. So it would come literally as a shell without the leisure battery, without the gas, etc. But apparently, according to the AA, not me, uh, post-2011 MRO starts to include things like the gas bottles and the battery that you would put in your caravan. But you'd need to be absolutely certain on that and you would best check with your dealer or do your own research online if you're buying uh, a second-hand caravan. So there are two things. The 85% rule though is all about MTPLM, your caravan with everything in it. That's the maximum you can tow. And then you've got to work out what the 85% rule actually is. Well, you then need to look at your own vehicle. What is the curb weight of your car? And generally speaking, you can find that on a plate, either a sticker or a plate. It might be in the engine compartment in some vehicles. More often than not though, you'll find it as you open your driver door uh, in, the, in the sort of center there between the two doors, down that pillar, you normally find a sticker with all things like tire pressures and one thing and another. And that's where you'll find generally the curb weight of your vehicle. Once you've got the curb weight of your vehicle, you need to work out what 85% of that is. So whatever 85% of your curb weight is, that would be what you could tow a caravan with that's full of all your gear. That's it in simplistic terms. 
uh, easy for me to say. <laughs> but what you need to do, of course, is do your own research and check this out. If you go into a dealer, they'll help you along with this. There are a number of calculators online. If you just Google that you're trying to work out what your maximum towing capacity of your car is, uh, generally speaking, you can find a calculator online where you can input your car, the, the year, the make and model, etc., uh, and also input the caravan that you're thinking of buying or that you've got, and uh, that will calculate and tell you uh, what you can tow or whether or not you can tow that caravan. So there's, there's a number on there, but again, ask any dealer and they're able to work that out for you very quickly. And the reason that's important is if you don't consider what sort of vehicle you have at the moment, you may go and find the caravan of your dreams, but find out then that your car won't tow it. In which case, you either need to go and find a different caravan or go and buy another car that will. And suddenly, buying the caravan that might be costing you £20,000 or more suddenly becomes very expensive because you've got to go and buy a new car as well. So consideration number one, very important. These aren't in any particular order. These are just in the order that I've put them together. But for number two, uh, the next key consideration is if you buy a caravan, where on earth are you going to keep it? And that is important. Um, obviously, you can go and store it somewhere. Um, often, you can find a local storage yard that takes caravans and motorhomes, etc. Of course, they want to charge you for storing it. Um, now, we haven't stored our caravan in the storage yard for a while now because we keep ours on the drive. I'd be interested to know, actually, that if you have a caravan currently and you've got it in storage, what sort of price do you pay to store your caravan in your area? You don't have to give the area away, particularly just interested to know how much do you pay for caravan storage. A really important part of your budgeting when you're thinking of buying a caravan. Now, if you're lucky, and we got lucky, um, we, you can keep your caravan on your drive. Potentially, you will need to check the deeds in your, on your property to see if you can. <clears throat> in, in this day and age, I think times have changed a little bit, but it, you might well find that in your deeds, uh, it will say that you can't keep a caravan on your drive. Um, a lot of people do, and I'm not suggesting for one moment that you do, even if it says that you shouldn't, but there are a bit sort of old uh, rules, if you like, that are in the deeds. <clears throat> a lot of people do these days. I think it very much depends upon where your property is and whether you're blocking lights and views of your neighbours and stuff like that. So that's a very important consideration. Now the next up, next thing that I've got up is, you know, it's important, we'll come on to talk about budgets and stuff in a second, but it's really important that you make a list of <clears throat> exactly what it is that you want from a caravan. This is something that Ellen and I made a big mistake on when we bought our first caravan. We, we were very impulsive. We are very impulsive people. Generally speaking, we will just go out and buy stuff. And this is why I think you can learn from some of our own experiences. So make a list of the things that you're looking for. Um, and I think the key consideration, what we got wrong was the layout of the caravan itself in terms of where the bed was. Because our first caravan had a French bed. Uh, the French bed, if you're not familiar with that terminology, is one that's up against the wall. So it means that one of you is always sleeping against the wall. And of course that then means in the middle of the night when you want to get up and go to the loo or something, you've got to clamber over the person laying next to you. It also actually, even things like just making the bed itself can be a bit more challenging. Now don't get me wrong, some people have got French beds and they're quite happy with that situation and that, you know, but as you get a bit older and a bit bigger, like what I am, I found we found it a bit of a challenge. So we've, after about two years of owning our first caravan, said now we, we need to change this. And of course, that's cost us more money because we've, you know, there's been depreciation on the first caravan and we've had to go out and buy another one. So if we'd only thought that through at the beginning, we would have bought probably the caravan that we've got now in the first place, saved ourselves a fortune. But it's not just things like the French bed and the layout. <clears throat> you know, you need to consider things that you need on your caravan, like a motor mover, or whether you want air conditioning if you're going to be traveling abroad a lot. Uh, what, what sort of layout, shape are you looking for in your lounge? How many people do you need to accommodate? You know, things like that. And that will make a big difference then to the sort of caravan that you would want or need. And also a big difference to the amount of money that you're probably going to pay for it. So make sure you do your research, find the van that you're looking for, uh, and make sure it ticks all of those boxes before you sign on the dotted line and start handing over the hard-earned cash. I think when you've got to that square and you've found the sort of caravan that you're looking for, you'll also then have a good idea of the sort of money that it's going to cost. And if you weigh in the cost of the purchase that's of the caravan is one thing, and whether or not you're going to have to equip it. Now, if you're buying second hand, a private purchase may well include everything that you need to get going. If you buy from a dealer, generally speaking, they will strip out all the bits and pieces that are in the caravan 
uh, and you'd have to go and buy them from new, potentially. Now that can really add up. I mean, when we bought our first caravan, which is a few years back now, about eight years ago almost, uh, I think we paid about eleven and a half thousand pounds for it. We didn't know if that was if we really, really wanted one or not. Whether it was just going to be a pipe dream, or something that you know be a fad and just last five minutes. We paid eleven and a half grand. I then paid nearly a thousand pounds for an awning, uh, and then by the time we bought gas and um, crockery and a television and bedding and all the things that you need to take your caravan out, we probably spent about another four grand. You know, so you need to consider that when you're doing um, your budget. So. That is the next important consideration. You've identified the sort of caravan that you want, you'll have an idea on the price and also what it's going to cost to equip it. And from there, you'll be able to work out the budget that you need to buy your caravan. And then you've got to make that decision on whether you're going to buy from a dealer, uh, whether you're going to buy new, whether you're going to buy second hand, uh, or whether you're going to buy private. And there's a number of pros and cons to take into consideration. Uh, you know, you can do your own research on this, of course, and this is not exhaustive by any stretch of the imagination. In terms of buying from a dealer, whether it's new or used, um, I think some of the pros would include things like you're probably going to get uh, some kind of warranty, de depending upon whether it's new or whether it's used. Not sure exactly what it is these days. It might vary from dealer to dealer, but you expect to get at least three or maybe six months uh, in terms of warranty. If you've bought one recently and you're watching this, be interested to know, you know, what sort of warranty did you get on a used caravan from your dealer? Um, obviously, we can share that with everyone else. <clears throat> so that's the first uh, pro that I would say. Um, the other pro probably is then if you've got any queries or problems with that caravan from a dealer, generally speaking, you can get it back there and they ought to be sorting that out for you. Um, we did buy ours used from a dealer, our first one, and um, we did have some problems, only, only very, very small, minute problems, and the dealer did sort them out, but one of them took a long time to sort out, and I had to get into a little bit, um, of, not an argument, but a, bit, a bit, bit of a battle to get it sorted, but we got there. So that's one of the pros, I think, is that you get the warranty, and <clears throat> you know they'll want to do the servicing and all that sort of stuff. But I think probably a bit more peace of mind in general from a, 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 a dealer, I think the one of the cons of that is you're probably going to pay more for your caravan. But that's because you're buying the service and they are a business and they need to make profit, etc. So that's, you know, generally speaking, I think you'll find you'll pay more money from a dealer than you would if you were buying private. But you do get the warranty, you do get the bit of an after sales service and peace of mind and stuff like that. So that's one of the things that you've got to weigh up. Our second caravan we bought, we bought privately. And I think that comes with a bit more of a risk, to be honest, especially in our case, because we bought it from the New Forest. We live here on the coast in Norfolk, and um, the New Forest was probably about a five and a half, six hours drive away. Uh, the people we bought it from weren't even in the country. They were in Greece. Um, we obviously drove down and had a look at it, and literally eyeballed it ourselves, uh, and off we went. We decided we'd like it, and we took it. And it was a risk. Um, it was a risk that's really paid off for us, actually, as it goes, because it's in mint condition, but it was when we bought it, in mint condition. It's got no damp, uh, no problems with the caravan whatsoever, and it's been a really, really good purchase. And the most important thing about this caravan was we got it at a very good price. We were really able to haggle and get this caravan extremely cheap, you know, several thousand pounds cheaper than what it was probably worth. And then we had everything included. We, we had another awning, so I had two awnings when we bought that one. Television, crockery, you know, bedding, towels, tea towels. The thing was fully equipped. We were very, very fortunate. Um, and you may be equally as fortunate if you're buying uh, private as well. The difference is, of course, once you tow that caravan away, that's it. You know, there's, there's no warranty as such. You're not really going to be able to go back to someone you bought privately and say, I've got a, a leak or this needs mending or whatever. Because it's down to you to make sure that once you've bought it, or before you buy it, that you're happy with what you're buying. Generally, sold as seen uh, is what we're saying. And then the other thing is, whether you buy new or whether you buy used, well, you don't generally buy a new caravan privately, so you're certainly buying new from a dealer. You'll be probably paying an awful lot of money, but then you will get manufacturer's warranty, providing all the service agreements, etc., are all followed through with the dealer that you've bought the caravan from. Um, but we never buy new. 
not, not certainly cars and caravans, never bought brand new. Normally about a year old. Get all the snagging out of the way and um, away we go. So it's all about personal choice. Will I buy new, will I buy used, will I buy private or will I buy from a dealer? Weigh up the pros and cons for yourself. But remember, once you've made the purchase, you've partnered with a good lump of cash and that's it. So um, that brings us on to the next couple of bits. Um, one is if, you, if you're buying private or through a dealer, make sure that you've got access to a service record and a damp report because I think they're the, probably the two most important things. In terms of service record, a caravan needs to be serviced every year just like a, vehicle, a car or a motorhome does. Uh, so if that's been done, you'll expect to see some record somewhere of that, ask to see them. And then the other one, and the very important one where a caravan's concerned, I think, is the caravan damp report. So as part of a, a service, or a reputable service engineer, you'll get a damp report as a matter of course. Have a look at it. What is a damp report? Well, there's a little example on screen there, but essentially someone will go around, your engineer, a service engineer will go around with a damp meter and, um, and take that meter to all areas of the caravan, the floor, the roof, the walls, everywhere. And whatever the reading comes up on the meter, uh, in terms of moisture, you know, that's the number that you will write down. Now, <clears throat> no expert on this, but I've done lots of times on the caravans that we have. And generally speaking, most people I think will tell you that if you've got a, a reading that's approaching 20 or more, uh, then you may have to have some slight concerns. Anything under 20, but certainly less than 16 or 15, I'd say is nothing to worry about. That's quite normal. There's always moisture in the air. There's always you know, moisture in everything that's around you, really. So I think an engineer would probably say if it's less than 20, nothing too much to worry about. If you've got readings anywhere in a caravan that's 20 plus, then, then be a little bit concerned and investigate that further. So again, you should get access to that, certainly through a dealer, and, um, and if you're buying private, ask to see them. The other thing that you could do, of course, is take an expert along with you, uh, or take your own, um, if you know how to use one, I've never used one, but take your own damp meter with you, uh, and go around and do some readings for yourself. Because again, once you've made the purchase, difficult then, you know, you're sort of lumbered or stuck with a problem if you've got one. So perhaps the cost that you may incur of taking an engineer or a surveyor with you to have a look would be a good investment, I would suggest. And again, something that I've never done. So here am I giving good advice, but it's based on the fact that, you know, learning from my own experiences. And then the other thing uh, I think is don't let your heart rule your brain. <clears throat> And we've been guilty of this so many times in the past, but more lately, as you get a bit older and a bit wiser and you start spending the lumps of cash that you've got to last you for the rest of your life, you tend to sort of just think things through a little more. And it's very easy to let your, your heart sort of overtake your brain when it comes to those big purchases because you know, caravans look great. You're already starting to imagine the lovely holidays that you're gonna have with your family, with your partner, with friends, whatever, and the fun that you're gonna have on the road, because you will, um, and all that overtakes um, what's going on in here or what's not going on in here and should be. So, you know, there's plenty of time. Um, you don't have to make the purchase today. Um, you know, just because it's got nice cushions or a, a lovely bed or nice colour coordinated furnishings, don't let that overtake you if you've got a mechanical problem or there's some damp or rust or, you know, you've not really seen the service uh, record or anything like that, then be weary and don't let your heart rule your brain. <clears throat> and then, then the next thing that I think leads on from that is whatever you decide, even if you've fallen in love and you think this is the caravan of your dreams, just go and sleep on it. Because I think by the morning, you'll know for sure that that is the caravan of your dreams and you are making the right decision and you've decided, yes, we're going to go for it, then go and go for it. But I think it's always a good idea to walk away, even if you think you've seen the caravan of your dreams. Unless, of course, there's a queue of people behind you and if you don't make the purchase now, you've lost it. Well, have you lost it? There are caravans for sale all over the place. You might have lost it on that day from that dealer or that private sale, but you'll find it somewhere else. You know, the market is flooded with caravans. And through COVID, yes, you know, supply and demand became a little bit like that. You know, the demand was up here, supply was down there. But that's evened itself out and probably going to go a bit more that way now in time. That's what happens. 
So sleep on it would be my recommendation. Uh, and then once you've slept on it and you've had further discussion, and you've had a cup of coffee first thing the next morning and decided, yes, that's it, we're gonna go for it, fine. Don't, I would say, never buy from a showroom or a dealer or privately in the moment, walk away. Often when you walk away, by the way, um, having worked in sales for most of my life, when you walk away, sometimes the next day you can go back and just get a bit more money off or get a little, a few more extras thrown in because, you know, you thought about it and we think that actually if the awning was included, we'd probably go for it. Or if, you know, if you could throw in the gas, then we've got a deal, you know. By walking away, a salesperson generally thinks they've lost the sale at that point. Yep, so definitely sleep on it. You won't regret sleeping on it, that's for sure. And really and truthfully, I think if you just, they are just a few top tips, a few headlines, a few top things that I would have perhaps done differently with hindsight. So if it helps you in any way, then that's great. But what I will say just to end on is once you've done it, enjoy it. I really don't think for one moment you'll regret it. It's the best purchase we've made really outside of buying a house, obviously. One of the best purchases we've ever made. And we've had so much fun since we got the caravan. And we've met lots of great people along the way. Uh, and obviously through the YouTube channel, we've um, got lots of new friends in our little caravantastic community. So I never wanted a caravan. I always wanted to have a motorhome. I think I've mentioned this on the channel before. Um, but we ended up with a caravan and we thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it. So it's a big, it is a big purchase. Um, but remember, it's still got a resale value. So even if you bought it and you get a few years out of it and you decide it's not for you anymore, you know, you'll be able to sell it and get some money back. And I think any depreciation, depending on whether you've bought new or used, given the amount of fun that you'll have, on what I still consider to be value for money holiday breaks. You know, we go away with the caravan, we spend between probably 20 and 50 pounds a night, depending upon the site and the time of year, etc. You know, where can you go and spend 20, 50 pounds a night? I know it's your own accommodation and you're towing it there, but I still think you end up with a really good value for money holiday. So if you're in the market, you've got the cash, um, you probably know what you want and you probably know where you're going to get it from. Just consider a few of those top line considerations before you go and purchase. I think it may just help you along and I wish in many respects I'd done that first time around uh, and then we'd have just bought one caravan and not buying two which is what happened to us. So massive thanks to everyone that subscribes to the channel. The numbers continue to climb. We're, we're knocking on the door of 10,000 subscribers already. I really honestly can't believe it. Helen and I are both really over the moon with the support that we get from all of you. Stay with us, stay tuned is what my new thing at the moment. Stay tuned because there's always something coming your way. Generally, we try and get a video out on a Thursday um, for health reasons. That's been a little bit hit and miss at times. And then if I've missed a Thursday, sometimes I'll pop one on a Sunday morning. But if it's not a Thursday at half four, it'll be Sunday morning, bright and early with breakfast in bed. So stay tuned, whatever you do. So like I always say, if you've not yet subscribed to the channel, now's your chance. Hit that subscribe button, uh, give us a thumbs up and hit the notification bell because that will let you know when all of our videos have just been released. And please do leave a comment. We love the comments. We answer every single comment that we get. Uh, and stay tuned and we'll catch you in the next one coming your way very soon. Bye for now.